What is going on you guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're staying indoors. Or kinda indoors, cause we still gotta go to the backyard and use the press. So what we got going on today, guys, is I'm gonna assess the uh, block that I got from the junkyard. Now I mentioned in the last video that you guys have seen this block in, I said that I was leading to believe it was a P72 GSR, not realizing that ITR and GSR both share P72 stamps and everything like in the block now leads me to believe that it's an ITR block thanks to you guys who commented in those videos about how to identify an ITR block. So we didn't build a short block over Friendsgiving because I found out that this rod had spun a bearing and you can see it right here. The uh, two rod bearings like fused itself together, which made sense why this crank wouldn't rotate in the junkyard. But I bought it anyways because I do have an ITR crank over here from my cousin's motor, right? Fresh crank, no spun bearings. Right here we have ITR rods, GSR rods, and a whole bunch of miscellaneous things there. You guys said that ITR crank has an R on it and I rotated the crank a few times to find this R. And sure enough, it does say R right there. The other giveaway is that the domes on the piston is an 11 to 1. GSRs aren't this high and um, it does say P73 right there on the top right there. So that's good to know that this is an ITR block. So I was talking to Simon and uh, we kind of like threw some ideas around that. If I decide I want to throw like an all motor setup into the all wheel drive CRX just so I uh, don't have the car out of commission, right? We were throwing some options around. Again, Simon builds engines, so he kind of knows more than what, you know, I'm getting myself into. And he said I should do an LS block with PR3 pistons, which he had lying around, brand spanking new. He hooked me up with this. And uh, with a GSR head, it'll raise compression to about 12.3. And I think 12.3 for an all motor setup on E85 with full bolt-ons should make some really good and usable power. But we'll get into that another time with the Ellis block and PR3 pistons. Right now, I wanna rebuild the ITR block. And uh, this is gonna like retain all the stock internals. So if anything went wrong, I'm not destroying brand new pistons and um, Eagle rods is what I'm going with so I want to try this first with all the stock components and if this works out We'll do the Ellis with the uh, New stuff. I'm gonna have to step into the backyard to use my press and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to press this ITR piston out of the rod and I'm gonna be using a GSR rod in place of this one since I do have a bunch of spares This is a spare ITR rod 104 but I have four GSR rods without pistons on it right here So what I was told was that cast pistons uh, normally get destroyed if you don't have the right equipment to try to press off the stock rod. And I tried my best to salvage this piston because this is the matching four to that block. And the only part that I nick was right here at the very bottom. Right here. Focus. Right there. And uh, I just used a razor blade to try to like get that to be nice and smooth if I decide to reuse this piston Which I'm trying to I don't want that to score the cylinder walls But other than that I was able to salvage it without cracking the pistons or anything like that I didn't care about the rods bending and uh, I got that right here So what Simon told me to do was get a little like scale. I don't know where I'm gonna find the scale to uh, measure the rods and try to find one almost to the same as this guy so that way it's like balance you know what i mean i'm no professional engine builder but uh Simon builds engine for a living so i'm gonna try to scale it and see which one of the four gsr weighs close to the uh one messed up itr right here 
Okay, guys, so I found a scale, and I need you guys to uh, keep the comments to yourself. But <laughs> we have a scale, guys. So what we're going to be doing right here is we're going to weigh the rod that came out of the block, which is this one right here, with the scuff up uh, journals from the spun bearing. And right now, the scale is zeroed out. You can see it right there. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, set this on the scale without any part of the rod touching anything else other than the scale. And we're at 541.2. Let me write that down. So I'm going to do um, SR spun rod. That is at 541.2. And I'm going to do 1, 2, 3, 4. I'll label the rods all right there. And uh, let's scale the rest of them. Zero it out. Rod number one. What was that? 540.1. Rod number two, where it says hold in that corner. That's what it is reading at, 540.9, 540.9, 9. what, 534.9, wow. All of these rods, I've removed the bearing because this one doesn't have the bearing in it, hold. 539.8 539.8 so that means number two rod is the closest even though none of them got into the 541s let me see what simon says okay i don't know if you guys saw it but rod number three number three uh didn't have a rod um bolt nut so i took it off the uh, spun one because that's trash now and now that i weigh this one it puts me at 541.2 and it says hold 541.2 is this guy so number three is going to be my best bet so that's awesome because these guys aren't close as number three is now hey one thing to remember when you put the rods back on the piston is to make sure that they are facing the correct direction now i don't know what's the right direction but i am going based off the other rods and pistons so i already marked it before i pressed it out the orange right here matches the orange there it goes on like so right and then on the rods has like engraving or embossed right here and nothing on the back side so keeping it in the same formation markings on the front nothing on the back tangs in the back and um that goes into the piston like so sorry if that doesn't make any sense but like i said i'm using this as a reference um you know keeping the uh, in right there the intake on the right same thing over here intake on the right and uh based off of this rod and piston markings on the top with the intake pointing to the right sounds so freaking complicated but that's gonna go in like so and then uh, when you punch the um, the wrist pin back in, it only goes to a certain like spot. And I'm, I'm just going to reference the uh, old markings right there to know when to stop on the wrist pin. Because I don't know how far it goes on the non-floating pistons. But um, yeah, I'm actually super dark. I'm going to take it to the press anyways. Also want to give another big shout out to my tuner Jeremy. He has always helped me from day one. When the issue with my CRX surface step, Jeremy has helped me in so many ways to try to get me up and going again. He ordered this head gasket from Speed Factory, had it shipped to my door, and uh, I opened it the other day. And he's gotten me one of the best head gaskets on the market. 
made by J.E. Procio. Again, Jeremy, I truly appreciate everything you've done for me. Thank you for this head gasket. And uh, I think I kind of figured out what I'm going to be doing with my motor. Having this head gasket on deck is going to help me get the CRX motor back and going in no time. Quick little discovery. So this one right here is the main bearings for the crankshaft. Uh, the one where the thrust are sitting at. Right there and right there. This, I don't know if you can see that. It, it, it doesn't even fit in this uh, journal. Wow. But if you look at it, it's pretty destroyed, right? And the other one that goes on... This guy, right, is, is pretty damn destroyed as well, too. Not sure what the last owner did, but uh, this this is pretty destroyed. Main bearings and one of the rods. So, obviously, I'm not going to use that oil pump anymore. And, yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, remove all the accessories off of this. Probably going to continue tomorrow. I'm going to take it outside, degrease the hell out of it. Probably take it somewhere where there's a pressure washer, clean the hell out of it, and uh, get it back here on the engine stand. So, yeah, probably see you guys tomorrow. Somebody's calling me. Hello? Uh, well, what are you doing? Um, test fitting my piston rings. Always home. Yeah, I'm here. Alright, sure. Alright guys, so we're back here in the garage. Now I'm over here testing all my rings in my cylinder before home because I was talking to Simon and he was saying that the Nippon or uh, NPR rings are like assuming it's a zero mile brand new fresh block so the rings are gapped accordingly now given that all of these uh blocks are you know obviously packed with a lot of mileage you know material from the cylinder walls are gonna lose some a lot of people were telling me that when you rebuild an engine to standard bore 81 mil for b series that you're always gonna have a little smoking because there aren't rings out there that are like tight gap for you to you know file them down accordingly to a uh, specification so he told me to check my set of rings to see where they sit at before hone and see if my rings will work for my rebuild so because obviously i don't want a lot of smoke or a little bit of smoke is fine because of given fact but i wanted to test my rings out to see where they sit and uh, right now i'm doing the uh, first ring which is top ring right here on the bag it's labeled for uh, dummy proof so how i'm getting these rings into the cylinder is you know, putting them down vertical, right, and then turning them, you know, flat out. Given that my pistons are all uh, 1101, they are all domed like this. So I can't use the piston to push it down and get that completely flat because the piston itself is not even flat. So what I did was I took my digital caliper and kind of gauge this you know at about like an inch and I'm pushing down on every end of the piston ring until they are all about the same right and if they aren't I'm just I'm just pushing them back up not a big deal okay so you can see it's pretty like even in there and you can see how the ends of the ring are like flat with each other and i'm going to check it with my feeler gauge 14 is where you want to be at for an all motor this is an oem standard rebuild i'm gonna throw this little chart on the screen which is for a b18c1 and i'm sure it's the same for the itr and the top ring right there it says ring end gap 
it's supposed to be 0.8 to 0.14 inch and um, 14 is my maximum so I'm gonna check with a 14 right off the bat right here and see um, where it sits it's a snug 14 snug yeah I can I can feel the uh, the friction on it 14 Ooh, this is even this might be a 13 this is a snug 13 and then this one over here is a 14 I haven't put this one in yet but it's good to know that my top rings are uh, 0 0.014 which is uh, within specification maximum a little too much for me but new rings are better than old rings you feel me so this is where we're reading this cylinder is 13 that's cool so I'm gonna do this one real quick it's dragging on the 14 I'm gonna try 15 real quick 15 only goes in about halfway so that's good my top rings are good maybe file this one down a little bit to match 14 across but 13 is still within specification now I'm gonna try my second rings second rings also labeled on the package and uh, same process as top rings I'm gonna go ahead and just set all four in place Wow just just by looking at setting these rings in place the gap is huge that's what I said oh 35 Wow, goes right through. Right through. Right through. And right through. That is not good. So, I'm going to throw this little chart back on the screen. And on the uh, second ring specification, it says 0 0.016 to 0 0.022. Wow, way off specification. That's not good. So now I just noticed that my second rings are not in specification. That means I cannot use it. Now, if your rings are a little bit wider out of the box, um, like still within specification, if you're going turbo, obviously you'd gap it a little like looser, which is okay. But mine is like way past specification for boosted and all mode application, uh, especially for standard rebuild. So I cannot use my second set of rings. Yeah, those, those NPR kits are like hit or miss. So. I may have to buy another kit and salvage another set of second rings if they are in specification. Otherwise, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do just yet. So what I'm doing throughout some of these videos is I'm gonna like check the block and everything I need and, and uh, you know, check clearances and everything before I do the initial install. So that way when I do the initial install, I'm not doing the run around or taking five days to build a short block. I'd rather have everything within spec and then have everything on deck same day and do it all on video with you guys. But that's the first step, new piston rings. Not gonna do any more today, guys. I'm probably just gonna focus on cleaning my block. It's really not that dirty. Just a lot of grimes on there from uh, sitting and you know the the wind blowing all the dust and getting kicked on the block. Um, I don't have to show you guys all of that, but uh, we are gonna end the video right here. I hope you guys are gonna stick around when I build that short block. And if you guys haven't already subscribed, be sure to hit the subscribe button. And if you guys enjoyed this video a little bit, be sure to hit the like button. As the days go on, the more research I do, the more knowledge I pick up. Thank you to Simon for all the tips and tricks. I'm hoping to build that short block here really soon. So I hope you guys are excited for that. So before the sun goes down, I'm going to clean that short block. But I want to thank you guys for tuning in today's video. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.